um, let people hop on here. All right, guys. So welcome as you are joining in here tonight. Our topic is on natural options for stress relief. And we are going to be discussing an herb that is called ashwagandha. You may have never heard of it. Maybe some of you have, but we are going to go into a little bit of in-depth conversation in sharing how maybe it could be a possible option that could help you and your family. So if this is your first time joining guys in one of these Wednesday night webinars, welcome. We are trying to bring you information that is pertinent to helping busy moms to navigate health, life, family, nutrition, workouts, recipes, however we can help. So I encourage you to go back and even check some of the previous live webinars. Last week, we did one for back to school, Costco meal and snack ideas. So feel free to go back and check that out. Uh, a real quick introduction. Stacy, welcome. I, uh, have been doing fitness and wellness for many, many years. And our passion is to help give you guys, you know, simple solutions. And part of that is also, you know, as I have navigated through my career in the last almost 30 years in health and wellness is always staying with is known as the latest research, the latest science, and how we can bring that information to people. You know, I am a busy mom with five kids. I have a fitness studio. I do nutrition consulting. I'm a personal trainer, group fitness instructor, and we also have our virtual workout options and meal plans. And as we navigate, you know, the options for health, there's so many areas to pay attention to, and it can be overwhelming. So I hope this helps to simplify things for you. And I'd love for you guys to use the chat feature. Feel free to ask questions. If you are on Zoom, I'll go back and make sure I also check those. So if you think of something as we're going, please let me know. So tonight we are chatting all about stress. And it is my goal that after this about 20 minute presentation here that you guys will have some insight into what are some of the causes of stress, the symptoms, how can we naturally cope with it, and understanding in particular one herb that could definitely benefit us all. So what are some of the causes of stress? Now, many of us probably think we, we know what triggers our stress, right? But oftentimes, we may not understand that there are certain things that cause more stress than others. This is the latest from a study that was done. I believe this was Forbes and it kind of shows what is the most common contributors to stress among Americans. And if you see number one is too many responsibilities overall. And I feel like that definitely plays a part into why we talk a lot about self-care and learning the things that we need to make more of a priority. Uh, next one is problems with finances. You know, money can be a huge trigger for a lot of stress. And these are, again, just some examples. But as we look at what those examples start to do to our health and into our life, it is amazing of how many things that oftentimes, and I apologize for my screen here. It's, um, there we go. It's, uh, it can be very interesting to see some of these things you may never relate to stress. Now, I was just talking with someone, one of my clients the other day, and her son is a doctor. And we were talking about how much stress is becoming more of why he is seeing patients. And I had mentioned to her that, you know, there is actually research out there that says that up to 80% of doctor visits are somehow related to stress. And if you look at some of these symptoms and signs of stress, Oftentimes you would never go to the doctor because your hands keep sweating and they tell you that's related to stress or you suddenly have an allergy attack or I just had someone in class this morning at 5.30 a.m. said their husband had some random hives and he believes it's related to stress. But as you look through the screen here, these are very interesting in how things like headaches and you know clenching your jaw, nervous habits, uh, compulsive behaviors, you have issues with your speech, constant tiredness, fatigue, weight gain, increased smoking, increase excessive gambling. But there are so many things on here that oftentimes, you know, we kind of forget stress is related to everything. And if you look at how stress affects our body, this is a great graphic that kind of showcases 
Every area in your body is affected. Now, I know you might not be able to read all those little words, but you can read the big ones, headaches, heartburn, rapid breathing, risk of heart attack, pounding heart, fertility issues, erectile dysfunction, missed periods, insomnia, depression, weakened immune system, high blood pressure, uh, high blood sugar, stomach aches, tense muscles, all the sex drive. There's so many things that we have to look at how we can start to naturally combat some of this. Now, it's important to also note here, guys, that we can't avoid stress. It's always going to be there, but it's how we learn to deal with it, okay? And you should struggle. There are times when that's our natural reaction, right? Think about it, you know, your house is on fire. You're going to struggle, right? But it's by nature, the situation and how we learn to then respond to that stress mechanism. And this doesn't mean that there is nothing we can do about it because there's a lot of things we can do about it. And there's a lot of natural solutions. And I'm not going to go into too much of specifics. I'm going to give you a few ideas, but I do want to spend a little more time talking in particular about ashwagandha tonight. So welcome, Sean. Uh, so how does stress show up? If you look at the example, you're going to see how it starts with, you know, pupils being dilated. We can notice dry mouth. We start to breathe faster. Our heart starts to pound, muscles tense, slow digestion, sweating of palms. And all of this is due to the first sign of threat, which happens in our brain. And that triggers our sympathetic nervous system to release adrenaline. That's that rush. And then the adrenal cortex releases cortisol that helps to continue to create more alertness in the body. And what does that cortisol do? High levels of cortisol, we are seeing more and more of why we tend to carry as we get older, especially more weight around the belly. A lot of that is due to high cortisol levels. But when we continue to see things like adrenal fatigue coming from high cortisol levels and the amount of symptoms that can happen from this, we have to know that there are changes that become mandatory that we have to look at doing. Now, one of the Biggest areas I always start to focus on when I am talking to clients about, hey, tell me about your lifestyle. Tell me about some of the things that you struggle with. And I will tell you almost every time there is some type of stress type related issue that we will find of why they're not sticking to their diet or their workouts. But it is always interesting to note that exercise is one of the key contributors to helping with reducing how stress affects our body. Stress increases our endorphins. It helps the body to be able to process stress, meaning that it doesn't cause harmful effects to things like our cardiovascular, our digestive, and our immune systems. And it helps to protect your body when you are under excessive amounts of stress. Now, you probably have known if you tried, you know, some type of form of exercise, how it does release tension, but we forget about that, but it can help us focus. There are so many things that we want to look at exercise being a big part of what we do. And we just created a new app with a big focus on, you know, five minute, 20 minute workouts, but the idea is by you keep surprising yourself, you get yourself moving more of how guys, this relates to everything. So we need to make sure we are exercising, we are moving, we are doing the right things. This goes beyond just the casual, yeah, get outside, that's great. But also make sure exercise is becoming part of your everyday lifestyle. How about nutrition? Guys, our bodies are made up of trillions of cells and they're always changing. We have old ones that are dying and new ones that are being formed every single day. It's pretty interesting. Our bodies are so complex, but as those cells turn over, we need to keep thinking about how we can maximize the health of those cells. That means more quality vitamins, more quality minerals, protein, and water. Those are what our cells are made of. So think about those things and how that is going to impact also how stress is affecting your body is by the nutrition you are putting in and the food choices that we are making every day. So there are two pathways to disease. I mentioned this, I mentioned this quite oftentimes, nutritional deficiencies and toxicity. Those are two of the biggest pathways to disease. So these are areas that we need to pay attention to and look at the options that are available to us to help fill in the gaps to um, best improving our health and creating balance in our life. So let's get into talking about what ashwagandha is. And again, if you are brand new to this, you know, oftentimes with herbs, I will start out by saying that there are lots of herbs out there. And for many reasons we need to make sure that we are being cautious because because something is natural doesn't mean it's always safe right but this is a non-toxic plant and it has been used for 
thousands of years in helping people in various areas of their health. And it has really gained a lot of popularity recently, and especially for stress and supporting your mood. And there are a bunch of options that if you look at what it does to help with decreasing stress levels, it also has a lot of other health benefits, which I'm always saying, you know, if you're going to use something, let's find something that has value in more than one area. And oftentimes, you know, when we're looking at herbs in particular, we need to also be cautious if they're being combined with other herbs, with other nutrients to make sure it's reacting. And that's where we'll get into talking a little bit more about that soon. But a couple of the different variations for ashwagandha is root powder and root extract. So there's two different forms of this actually. Now I always say guys, if you are taking a medication, you do want to check with your doctor just to make sure that it would not affect, you know, whatever the medication is trying to do. So make sure you always check with them. But ashwagandha for the most part is very safe as long as you're using a safe form of it. Now the extract is going to be much safer than the root powder because of the fact the whole plant is being used for the powder versus the extract amount. Now, if you look at what supplements are, generally you want to make sure that they are processed in a way that they keep the high value of nutrients. Okay. So we want the most that we can get nutrient wise. And from the benefits of ashwagandha, you know, this does go beyond. There are studies that talk about infertility. There are studies that talk about it helping with sleep. There are studies that talk about, you know, inflammatory levels in the body with ashwagandha. And that is why it's getting to be more and more popular. And you're going to find that there's a lot of different supplements that are hitting the marketplace because of the known benefits of this. But again, we do need to be cautious and make sure that what we are using doesn't have unnecessary additives. If you look at a lot of the products in the store, it's really easy. Flip the label over and see how many things are in that product along with that specific ingredient you are looking for. Most of the time, you are going to find a lot of preservatives, a lot of fillers, sometimes allergens, sometimes, you know, things that, you know, are added to the product to enhance it, sometimes preservatives, colors, sugars but all of those can trigger allergic reactions or sensitivities in the body. So be cautious and check the ingredients and you want to make sure that you are not just looking at the price tag. If you look at most ashwagandha products in the marketplace, they're going to be anywhere. I have seen them generally from $15 up to $60. So there's a big price range in there, but the price doesn't always necessarily have to do with the quality. And this is where the education comes into place that we want to know that when we're looking at products, especially herbal ones. And again, guys, you know, my, my certifications in, as a nutritionist, you know, we did, we, we dug a lot into understanding supplements for a couple of the certifications I took. And I was really amazed at how dangerous supplements can be. And this is why I'm passionate about sharing. So people understand, but clinical studies really help to validate the safety and the effectiveness of a product like ashwagandha. So that is, you know, important that we note that. Now, I know many people, one of the big options today for pain and even for inflammation is CBD. And I am not going in depth. We only have, you know, I try to keep these to somewhere around 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, but CBD oils are the effectiveness for long term, there is no studies improving its effectiveness. And it can also mask the symptoms versus helping to build health. And that's always something we want to look for. Whereas ashwagandha actually can help to work more at the cellular level, along with these other things we're talking about. We want to make sure we are really filling our bodies with good nutrients to best handle stress. Now, when we talk about supplements, I wanted to showcase a couple to help you guys be thinking, am I getting these things that I should be on a daily basis? One of my favorites is something called Vitalizer, this little strip you can see on the screen there. Such a great concentration of nutrients. Basically, you'd have to eat everything you see on the screen here in one day that is in one serving of this time-released supplement. You'd have to eat a couple Brussels sprouts. You'd have to eat seven oranges, 10 cups of milk, 27 servings of almonds, a cup of broccoli, 15 servings of steak. You know, you can see the list here, five chicken chicken breast, 19 cups of plain yogurt to get the riboflavin. There's, again, you just see the list here. And for most of us, this would actually be pretty much impossible. And many of us would not want to eat on a daily basis things like 
65 ounces of canned tuna, for example, or 50 grams of sardines. So this is where supplements become very important to help fill those gaps. Because as we mentioned, if we have some deficiencies, we may notice the body struggling more to handle stress. So here's a couple other areas I wanted to also highlight. When I mentioned clinical studies, now there are a lot of studies supporting vitamin D and stress relief, and vitamin D also helps to regulate the production of cortisol. Uh, welcome, Regina. Guys, as you're popping on here, feel free if you have any questions, please um, add them in the chat here. But it helps to reduce the amount of cortisol in your body and improve your stress response. And this is directly from Mayo Clinic that we are seeing more and more research on what vitamin D does, but we need to make sure that if we're supplementing, it's an absorbable kind of vitamin D. And for most of us, you know, a lot of us I know that are on tonight here are in Michigan, and we are going to be soon hitting the time of year where we have to have even more supplementation of vitamin D because we're not getting it from the sun. And this can be a huge response for how our body handles stress, which again, we talked about a little earlier, malfunctioning cells, nutritional deficiencies leading to disease, right? So if we can combat that by adding extra vitamin D, I would highly recommend you looking at the amount you are taking. Another really important nutrient for supplementing is called B-complex. And B-complex is very unique for the fact that it will help to generally balance the areas that many of us see when we are under stress that one B variation that we tend to notice the most is B12 being deficient. But if we take a full array of B vitamins, we're gonna make sure we're not becoming deficient in another area. B vitamins in particular, this one that I'm showing you here, the B complex is water soluble. You excrete what you don't use, but it really does help to fill in the gaps. Now, when you are more stressed, you're gonna notice sometimes you need more B vitamins. You're gonna notice that when your body is really noticing you know, more cravings, for example, that can be showcasing a symptom of the B vitamin deficiency. So B complex, great to add in for stress relief and stress support and for energy. Very important. Your cells need B vitamins. Cell renewal is something that, again, turns over the cells quicker that helps with our body's ability to deal with stress. And one area that I find to be extremely important is blunting cortisol. We mentioned the vitamin D a little bit. But here is talking about now, in particular, stress relief complex. Now, you can purchase ashwagandha separately, and you can get it in a powder. You can get it in gummy forms. There's all different forms. But the thing that I found with most of them is, again, the lack of clinical studies. And many of them are filled with sugars and preservatives. So I know that the stress relief actually has a clinical study because it was tested in a preliminary seven-day double-blind placebo-controlled study that they measured four key categories, and that was relaxation, alertness, tension, and concentration. In every single category, the people taking stress relief complex experienced more benefits than those con that consumed a placebo. And you can see maybe on this chart, depending on what time of type of screen you're on, that that white on the bottom shows the placebo effect and the brown shows what happened when people used stress relief complex. So what does this do? It's kind of like we have nicknamed it like Zen in a bottle. It helps you to relax. It helps to feel less anxious. It is used in a lot. Somebody had asked a question about, is ashwagandha safe for kids? Yes, it is. Actually, they use in a lot of kids with ADHD and with ADD and areas that we need to focus improve concentration. Ashwagandha is amazing for that. But again, make sure it's safe form, that it does have the studies. And that's where I know stress relief complex. I can feel very good because I know that it has the right amount of ashwagandha, but it also has something in here called L-theanine. And some of you, you know, might not like the education, but I'm big on helping you to understand why you should take this and what it does. And L-theanine is an amino acid that's actually found in dried tea leaves. And that combined with the ashwagandha, which we talked about ashwagandha, um, it's actually used in Ayurvedic medicine that it's been used for, for many years, but it comes from the root of an evergreen shrub that's found in the Mediterranean and Middle Eastern regions. So it's grown far away, but the roots are extracted and the extract is then concentrated and dried for the stress relief complex. And that way we know that we're getting a clean source. We know that if you're familiar with a company like Shackley, they don't use pesticides, herbicides. They are above organic standards, very clean. But then they also add in there something called L-tyrosine. Again, this is where 
the concept of combining was we learn and we do studies that when we can combine things, the L the L tyrosine is an amino acid and it's the building block of protein. So that helps to produce neurotransmitters that are chemicals in the brain that when we feel those stress levels raising, it helps to block similar to the cortisol levels. So we have a combination of ingredients that then we test to make sure that they work well together. And one of the things that I also love about this is the fact that it is now you know, some of these products, you do have to be careful because they can actually make you tired because they add things that will suppress the immune system in the body. So not only can it affect you feeling more tired, but it can also affect your immune system. We know for this, that it is calming, it's relaxing, and it's non-drowsy. But for some people, it can actually help them with sleeping. We do have, uh, you know, a lot of people have mentioned they take this stress relief before bed, and it can really help them with their deep sleep. And it does help to promote natural norepinephrine, which is a neurotransmitter, which that can help with also enhancing your performance when you are under a lot of stress. So that again, ties in with sleep, ties in with your concentration, even lower blood pressure. There are some positive studies on ashwagandha and lowering blood pressure. So this is something that I feel is very interesting. As of right now, there is no known interactions with medication. Again, you do want to be careful if you're taking things like antidepressants, maybe check with your doctor. As I said earlier, it's always a good idea to be safe, but I have never had anyone with an interaction using stress relief complex or B complex or any of the vitamins I showed you and their medications because we know they're safe. And we know this company tests to make sure that they're is nothing that's going to uh, have a negative side effect. So that is great to mention, Sean. Yes, stress relief and magnesium. That is awesome to take before bed. Yes, and can be very calming. So, and I also made a list here of other areas that something like stress relief and ashwagandha could be very helpful for. So I am going to just read this list because I can't remember all these things, but autism, hyperactivity, learning difficulties, hormone imbalances, headaches, depressed immune system, elevated blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, digestive issues, physical or mental fatigue, poor memory, athletes, people that are under extreme stress, like losing your job, divorce, death, public speaking, irritability before a performance, stressful job situations, nervousness, people that struggle with panic attacks. Think of all the things where you need quick relief this is something that stress relief can be extremely valuable for. Now, I'm waiting for the question. Nobody's asked yet, but do you take this daily? Yes, you can take it daily, especially if you know your body has been up under, you know, extra, you know, things around you and areas that you need protection from take it daily. But the great thing is you can also add more as needed. So if you're having a really stressful day, maybe you need another one. You can take extra if needed, and it's not going to have any negative effects like it would if you were taking a synthetic or an herb that might not be safe, doesn't give you jitters. Um, you know, ashwagandha is again, probably one of these safe herbs that we have found research on today. So, all right, guys, I'm watching for any more questions and we are just coming past 20 minutes. For age that is recommended for kids to take stress relief, honestly, we have seen some some positive studies as young as three years old. But here's the thing. There's not a lot of clinical studies on that age. Kids, they tend to really shy away from doing clinical studies on supplements and kids. But I will tell you personally, we have used it with clients for you know, three and up for probably the last 15 years used ashwagandha. So I feel as though it is very safe and I've never had an issue yet. Um, so great question, but yes, I would say also know that everybody reacts differently, you know? So if it is something, maybe you start out with half of one for a kid, depending, especially if it's like a three-year-old, you know, that'd be a great option. You could even crush it and give them half of one to start. So this was a little package I thought I would throw out there. If you were looking for, how should I get started with the best variety of supplements for stress relief. This is what I would pick. We're happy if somebody invited you to this, or if it's me, you are welcome to reach out with questions about any of this, or if we can help you, we'd be more than happy to share more information. Now, if you guys also have some topics that you would like us to share more on, 
This is why we're here, guys. We are here to provide information. September 11th, we're going to be starting in this group a fun five-day veggie and fruit challenge. So look forward to that. And I hope this was helpful for you guys. And please, anytime, reach out with questions. And again, guys, please invite people to this group. We want more people out there focusing on how we can take charge of our health and help these busy people out there because we all need solutions and options. So Take care, guys. Have a great night and stay healthy, guys. Thank you.